All right, so my name is Alice Otto with uh, Simple Option Strategies, and today I'm going to be presenting ES options on futures. This is a, uh, a trade that I've been doing since, since uh, end of September, uh, testing it and seeing how things would work, and it's really a phenomenal trade. And, and, um, and so we'll be talking about a lot of the things that, uh, that go into it, the different, um, the different processes between SPX and ES, um, and hopefully you'll be able to learn all that and we'll get through that, okay? All right, so um, for those of you who are live, thanks for being here. For those of you who are gonna be seeing this on YouTube, make sure you like it and subscribe. Uh, and uh, that would be great, um, great for me, great for you. And uh, this way it'll, it'll keep on uh, giving us good content for you guys to learn. All right, so uh, let's move on here to what you can expect. So today um, you're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how you can make consistent returns monthly based on margin capital risk using high probability trades without taking large losses and make those month, make, make those returns month over month. Okay. Um, this is a uh, high probability trade and um, the, the things that you're going to learn today are understanding, basically understanding the difference between SPX trades and options on futures trades. It's number one. Number two, how to identify the strike, strike prices and spread width on ES futures options trades uh, to increase your chances of profitability. Uh, number three, how to identify interday trade setups that yield quick directional trades in a trending market. And the best time to trade uh, one DTE and how best to mitigate zero or one DTE options on futures trade uh, that is threatened. Okay. So uh, with that, there's going to be a bonus at the end. And so I'm asking you to stick with us until the very end. You won't want to miss it. I'm sure. You're going to be happy with that. All right. One other thing is uh, just asking you to turn off all your distractions. There's going to be some little complexity in, in some of the trades here. Hopefully you'll be able to focus in on what we're going to be talking about. Uh, there's going to be a Q&A session. All I ask is that you uh, put your questions in the um, in the question, the Q&A section, uh, and I will be able to uh, go through that and be able to answer all of your questions uh, to the best of my ability. All right. Okay. So reason that you're here. So reason number one, and I have three reasons why you would be here, uh, just to get a poll here. Uh, you're interested in learning new strategies that will take your trading performance to the next level so that you can finally leave that nine to five uh, career behind. Uh, number two uh, is you've seen, heard about, read about, and others making money in trading, and you know you can do it too, but you're just not seeing your account grow fast enough based on your goals. And number three, You've tried different trading strategies that you thought, okay, this is it, only to discover that it's just not getting you to the place of consistent trading results, right? So with that, in the chat group, just give me some kind of uh, signal there for which one of these is closest to you, number one, two, or three. Uh, interested in learning, desire to see your account grow, or wanting to get your consistent uh, results in. Uh, number one, thanks, Mike. Three, Stephen, thank you. All right, three, good. All three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number one, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, good, good, good. All right, for those of you who are uh, threes, you, you want these consistent returns. So I, we, do, we all do. Yeah, so I think I covered it, hopefully. I covered uh, everything that you're hoping for. Uh, let's see if we can make it uh, make it a reality here. Okay, all right. I'm not a uh, multimillionaire with a uh, huge uh, uh, yacht. Uh, I live here in Puerto Rico with my wife, and uh, those are my five kids in the middle, and um, my parents on the right. A long time ago, with uh, that was an MBA program that I went through. So just a regular guy, uh, loving to do what I do best, um, and. Uh, um, so let's start with mindset. Okay. Uh, imagine what it would feel like if most of your trades were winners month after month, 
and it would be confirmed by watching the size of your account grow at the same time, right? The second part of that is becoming the trader that no longer takes large losses, but consistently trades according to a proven trade plan that is profitable over time, allowing you to grow your account month over month. That's really, really important, okay? Having a positive attitude, um, having you know uh, high probability trades that you trade, having an edge, uh, allowing you to make those consistent profits uh, over and over again is really, really the key to a trader, okay? Uh, once you once you've attained that, you you really you know you've really arrived. All right. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with this trade. Okay. That uh, that I've been testing here for for uh, a couple months. Um, and I trade this trade. Now I trade this trade every single day, every single day of the week. Uh, sometimes on Sunday night uh, as well. Uh, so uh, and this is what I do, guys. All right. And so I've been able to really really understand and how to manage this trade as well. And I'm going to be sharing that with you. All right. So let's let's talk about what an option uh, ES option credit spread is. All right. Very, very similar to SPX, uh, but it has some some things that we're going to talk about that are that are positive and a couple negative. OK, so credit spread is a combination of two puts and two calls where the put and call is that's sold is more expensive than the put or call that is bought. Right. And that way, that's why it's called a credit spread, because you receive a credit when you actually enter that trade. Uh, um, the first part of the trade is that you're selling options. All right. And so um, uh, I was an option buyer a long, long time ago, but I turned into an option seller because those are much higher probability uh, uh, for success. OK, so this is the flat. This is basically the the. Uh, um, the format that thinkorswim uh puts this in okay and it looks really really complicated um and i don't know you know after looking at this several times you know i thought i'm sure they can shorten this thing and make it you know easier to understand but we'll go through that okay what what each each part of this is all right but that's that's basically what you get when you uh, when you sell uh an options uh, uh futures uh, options trade okay uh, so you're actually selling the 3715 strike price and you're buying a 3700 uh, 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 put. Okay, so you're you're selling the put and you're you're actually buying the put. Okay, and the and the put that you sell is a 3715, and the one that you buy is a 3700, and that actually creates a credit because one one is more expensive than the other. The next part about it is this is this is considered to be a high probability trade, and we'll talk about why that is. All right. OK, so let's break down this trade. All right. <laughs> so uh, I shared I showed you with this in the last slide, but let's let's talk about each part. OK, so the first part is that the you know, the, the selling of contracts. So you're selling one contract here. All right. Uh, the, the spread type is a vertical. This is the futures contract, all right, that you're actually uh, uh, using to, to place this trade. And it's an option on that contract. Uh, the multiplier is 50. So normally you'll see uh, S&P or the SPX, you always see like a 100 after it, okay? That's the multiplier, which means you're getting 100 shares for every point that you put on. In ES, in the ES options, they use 50 as a multiplier. So, so every... Uh, every 50 shares is one point, so it's in, it's cut in half. Okay, and we'll we'll see the uh, the math there in a few minutes here. All right, uh, expiration is that's that's what the expiration is. Uh, it's kind of quirky because it it uses you know uh, the the week and then uh, or, or the or the day and then the week um, and then the um, uh, and that that tells you where that is when you're putting on that trade. Okay. The futures contract extension, which I don't, I don't even know what that is, but that's part of the uh, the trade that you'll see when you put it on. Then you get your short strike. We just talked about that. The 3715 is what you're selling. The 3700 uh, is what you're buying. Those are the, that's the long strike. Okay, and that's kind of the limbo that we use. All right. And uh, the option type is a put. And uh, uh, and the premium is one dollar and twenty-five cents. Now I'm going to say when you when you put on normally on SPX, okay, and it's kind of kind of wrap your head around this, all right? The the one twenty-five 
is cut in half, right? So when you put on this trade, you're actually selling uh, 125 and you divide that by, by two. And that's what, what that's actually what your premium is, all right? Because it's 50, not 100. So, um, so think about that a little bit. <laughs> okay, so uh, the risk reward on this is very, very similar again to, um, to a uh, SPX uh, credit spread. Okay, the only thing is, again, it's cut in half. So normally, when you put on one trade on SPX, you're, you're, you're risking $1,000. With this one, you're actually risking $500 minus the credit, the 6250, right? Because that's the multiplier. So, um, uh, so, you, so you're actually using less margin. Um, and, and, and it's a, so, so that's one of the benefits that you have, right? So you can trade even smaller than SPX. Okay. All right. So the next part is the max loss here is $437, where, uh, again, the SPX would be a thousand minus the credit that you receive. Right. All right. So let's go through the normal stuff, um, <clears throat> that, um, uh, that that's part of an option. Uh, that decays. Okay. So from 68 to 33 days, the rate of decay is 34%. From 33 days to five days, the rate of decay is 57%. And from five days to expiration, the rate of decay is 100%. Now I trade these. I don't trade. I don't use five days or 33 days for these. I only trade these one day and two day. These are one day and two day trades for me. That's it. Okay. Um, and that's, that's, Part of the part of the uh, benefit of this as well, right? Because you you're not holding uh, a lot of uh, a lot of money for a long time. All right, so let's talk about profitability factors, and there's three. Number one is implied volatility. So volatility is uh, in the market, right? When it's higher, you get a bigger premium. When it's lower, you have a lower premium. And and uh, there's it's a double-edged sword because when volatility is high, you're really, really far away from the market and you want to be far away from the market, but the swings are really, really, they're a lot. And so when volatility is low, uh, what happens is you're very, very close to the money and uh, any, any jump, you know, you can, you can get breached, right? So there's, uh, there's good and bad with that. All right. Now that's uh, profitability number one. Profitability, uh, profitability factor number two is theta. Theta is the rate of decay that an option goes through. So again, when volatility is higher, the rate of decay is uh, is uh, uh, is faster. When when volatility is lower, uh, the rate of decay is slower. Uh, but every option has an end life, right? And it's always always uh, decaying, right? And that's why you want it. You want to be an option seller as as a for as a as opposed to an option buyer. All right, profitability number three uh, is market direction. Now, in in this trade, I you know with with zero DTE seven you know SPX zero DTE, my focus is is uh, is trading that using using theta, right? Using the rate of decay, because uh, I put those on at the very uh, start of the market. With with uh, ES futures, what you can do is you can do both. You can put them on, you know, uh, a little bit longer. Uh, and, and use the, the decay on that. And then you can also, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're good with technical analysis, you can actually use those to, um, you know, to, to, to play directional trades, all right? And I use them, I, I do both, all right? I do both uh, in my trading. And so it works really, really, really well. Okay, so uh, let's, talk, let's talk about uh, risk management guidelines. And I always share this with, with everyone. So if you guys have heard it already, just kind of close your, eye, close your ears and, and let me go through this for those of you who haven't, okay? So uh, this is really important. You always want to trade with a plan, all right? Uh, risk management is really, really important. You always want to try to uh, trade with a plan. You want to determine what your max loss is and risk reward. And you want to know what you're getting into, right? Before entering that trade. Number three, you want to trade no more than 20% of your credit margin at risk. Uh, so if you have a, a $10,000 account, you don't want to trade more than $2,000 in that in that account. Okay, and and uh, you do that because sometimes you have to, um, you know, close out your trade for a loss or you have to roll it. 
you know, and sometimes it, it takes a little time to do that. And so you're going to you're going to tie up some money and you don't want to tie up a lot of it. Um, <clears throat> you don't want more than a 2 percent loss on a trade trading capital. Some traders use 1 percent uh, for that. Uh, for a highly trending market, position your trades to follow the trend. And this is a great uh, instrument to use to uh, to do dir those directional trades. Size your trades to ensure that emotions are not part of the decision making process. I always say trade small and trade often, especially if you're if you're starting out. OK, so you want to trade small and even in, in trading with these particular um, uh, trades. Uh, you can trade even smaller than you can with uh, with SPX. So that's again, that's one of the benefits. All right, uh, let's go in the pre-market and post-market routine. Review areas of support and resistance. Uh, review the dollar, dollar where that is. And if you know, um, uh, if you if you realize that um, we have uh, um, the S and P 500 is is made up of multinational companies, and so when the dollar goes up, uh, it's it's harder to sell products to. Uh, overseas, you know, when the dollar goes up, it's just the uh, goes down. It's just the opposite, and so you want to be mindful of that. The ten-year Treasury uh, competes for dollars in the in the stock market. The bond market and the stock market compete, and so when bond rates go up, basically there's competition for dollars, right? So so uh, you know if you have a if you have a four percent bond rate, uh, that's just riskless money. Basically, you can put that in, uh, put that in, you know, buy buy bonds, and you get a four percent return forever. So, bond rates go down. There's more, uh, there's more competition in the stock market um, because the rate of return is not not as good. You want to understand um, uh, futures trending direction, uh, the VIX as well. Um, the VIX is the volatility uh, indicator for the for uh, the S and P 500. Uh, and it's it's uh, since since uh, uh, ES futures are a derivative of SPX, uh, it uses the same uh, volatility index. Okay, um, and then you want to determine your credits credit positions, uh, you know, and save them uh, so that you get ready for the trading day and know what you're going to be uh, what you're going to be uh, trading. Okay. All right, post-market routine, uh, determine if rules were broken and why, determine if risks were, were within acceptable ranges. Um, uh, determine if losses were within acceptable ranges, you know, um, and then determine if tweaks uh, to your trade plan is necessary, and then update update your trade journal, especially if you're if you're trading a new trade. Uh, you wanna you wanna understand what you're doing right and wrong, and so you you it's really important for you to to uh, to maintain that. All right. So let's go into. Um, Pattern day trade, okay? Pattern day trader, and this is really, really important. Most of you know, but but some of you probably won't know that if you trade, uh, if you if you open a trade and you close a trade in the same day, that is a day trade, okay? Uh, there are restrictions if you uh, if you uh, if you do more than three trades within a five day period, uh, and it can restrict your account. And actually restrict it to the point where you can't use that broker anymore. Okay, so you never, you really don't want to do this. And and the problem is, is that uh, if your account is under twenty five thousand, and this is one of the reasons that I that I wanted to to learn about this trade and 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 share it with you. If your if your account is lower than twenty five thousand, you're susceptible to that restriction for pattern day trader. Okay. So anyone with an account that's over twenty-five thousand, you don't have to worry about it. But if your account is under twenty-five thousand, if you trade those three trades, three day trades within that five day period, if you go over that, if you go for four, then they can restrict your account, and you're you're no longer able to trade with that with that broker. And that's a change that that was made this year, um, and so you you really need to be cognizant about it. However, with options on futures, you don't have to worry about it. There's no PDT restriction on that, okay? And that's this is you, you can you can start trading with, you know, with with a with a couple thousand dollars, and you can you can go in and out, in and out, and there's no uh, there's no uh, uh, day trade restriction on that, okay? And this is one of the great things about this trade. All right. So to avoid being flagged, you can limit trades to one trade three days a week. Manage trades. Um, you know, from from multiple accounts, uh, trade wide, iron condors, 
or you can trade options on futures uh, spreads and it's not subject to PDT restrictions. And that's where you want to go. Okay. That's really where you want to go because you don't have to worry about anything else here. All right. Okay. So let's go into uh, this, the trade strategy and what, what it's, uh, how it's made up. Okay. So uh, first let's compare SPX to ES, right? Okay. Number one, um, overnight risk on SPX? Yes. And the reason is because at four o'clock, you can note, you know, the, the uh, SPX, uh, SPX options are not a, you're not able to, uh, to trade those anymore from five o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday until 930 the next day, you have no control of how you can uh, trade as you know how you can manage the spx uh, uh, options with es options there's no overnight risk because you can manage those trades through the night okay so um and a lot of times i get up at night and i and i actually uh, uh manage those trades all right um <clears throat> the multiplier i referred to this earlier for spx is 100 for um for for es it's 50. And so again, you can you can start with a trade a, a smaller trade amount. Okay, um, SPX has a greater margin requirement than ES, uh, so there's the greater margin requirement for SPX, less margin requirement for uh, ES, and I'm going to show you that, uh, you know, and how that math works. You have the ability to roll uh, trades into later expirations with ES. You do not. All right because it's based on the, the contract that you're trading on that particular day. So if you want to roll that trade, and we'll get into this, well, if you want to roll that trade, you have to close it and, and put it into the next contract. You know, uh, So you close a trade and you open it in the next contract, or you, uh, you, can, you can roll a trade within the same contract uh, and it's called a condor, okay? Uh, but that's, that's a, that's a uh, that is a little, that's part of uh, the downside on, on ES, that you can't roll into uh, other expirations, right? Um, uh, SPX is cash settled. So if, if you have a loss, right, uh, they'll, they'll take money out of your account. On futures, basically, it's, it's, con it's futures contract settled. So they don't take any money, but you'll get assigned a futures contract. And I'll show you an example of, of what, you know, that happened to me, and I'll show you what, what occurs, okay, with that. OK, so that's that's a big difference as well between SPX and uh, and ES. And then uh, third or the last, I'm sorry, is commission fees are less expensive on SPX. They are based on the contract. OK, uh, and commission fees are more expensive on on uh, on ES. However, uh, if you position it right and I'm going to show you this, right, you'll actually use less margin for uh, ES trades, okay, because of the multiplier and uh, the, 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 the smaller requirement of margin. The, the fees and, not the fees, but the commissions are a lot more, okay? All right. Okay, so let's compare now. I'm gonna compare, these are apples to apples. So I'm, I'm taking SPX and ES, right, with a, an 11 delta, okay, and, and using the same width. Right, so let's go through that. So here's an example of, an, an, and this is a, a day trade, right? This is a, a zero DTE trade. So you're you're um, <clears throat> you're putting up 80 cents for an 11 delta, right? You're using a 10 wide uh, spread here, okay? And your buying power effect is $920. So it's it's a thousand dollars minus the 80 uh, the 80 dollars plus the uh, the com you know the commissions and fees, right? Okay, so now apples to apples here. So we're going to go with one contract, uh, same, you know, the same delta. Okay, uh, you see the strikes are a little higher because the uh, the, the the pricing uh, for futures and S and the SPX are different. Okay, uh, but it's based on the same delta, and you can see here that um, you're you're doing on uh, one contract, it's one, 110, okay? And, uh, and, and let me see here, okay. So 
the credit that you receive is lower for one contract of a ES future, uh, options future, than it is for the SPX. It's actually 52%, uh, you get a 52% additional premium. However, you're also, uh, you're also using less margin. See, it's almost cut in half. So, you know, it's hard to tell here, you know, what, what, uh, you know what the co true cost is so what i did was i went to uh i used the same kind of um uh, size and and delta but additional width for es all right and so i made this kind of apples and apples because now i'm using i'm using uh let me see yeah i'm using additional width on this so you can see here that the 3860 and the 3845 so there's 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 more margin uh, I'm sorry. So there's more margin here uh, that has to be used when you when you you know widen the spread. However, you've got an 80 and 60 now, right? When when I widened it, and so now you, and and remember the multiplier is 50, and so what you're actually getting is not a dollar 60. You're actually getting uh, 80 cents, right? So so these two are basically the same. The credit that you receive. And you can see it here is 80 and 80, right? When you when you widen that spread. However, so now now you're looking at basically the same thing, right? Because uh, let's go through here. So now you're only getting two additional uh, points of uh, two additional percent of uh, premium, which is basically the same, right? For SPX and you 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 also get a 20 per 20 21 percent additional buying power uh um for for spx right so so it's a lot less margin that you're using for the same credit okay is as long as you're putting out your uh your spread with a 15 wide rather than a 10 wide and so that makes it much more compatible so you can you can tell the difference between uh, the two so you're actually using less margin so basically if you use less margin you can trade bigger okay and uh and the credit is almost identical right so the 250 or you know over three 350 and fi and fees can be uh, you know mitigated because you're you're getting basically less uh, you're have, having to use less margin for your trades. So instead of trading you know one contract, you can trade two contracts, and um, you know you'll you'll get you'll get much more uh, credit uh, doing that. So. Um, those are those are basically the comparisons that I that I went through, and I thought, wow, you know, and, and what I thought was, okay, the commissions are higher, the the, the 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 buying power effect is higher, but it's really not. It's just the opposite, and so you're getting actually a better uh, better efficiency using uh, the the ESL on you know the the options on futures. All right, okay, so let's go through the. Um, Let's go through the entry and exit, uh, and this is more simplified because uh, it's really not zero DTE or one DTE. You you put these on uh, at at any time that you that you want to. Okay, and and you know, uh, and I usually put them on at the end of the uh, the end of the session or the entry of the the overnight session, just because um, typically it's it's a it's a much less you know the the market moves less volatility overnight okay than than you do in the regular session you have news events uh you have all kinds of things that happen during the day um but at night basically there's there's uh you know uh, the market doesn't move that much and it's and it's less volatile all right all right so enter spreads the first hour you know for the, within the first hour of the overnight session so i i usually usually put them on around six or seven at night okay uh when i put them on or a lot of times i'll put them on when you know there's patterns that the market has right the market will typically um the, the market will typically you know in a bull market it'll go up and then it'll it'll retrace around you know two o'clock 
right? And that's a great time to put on these trades because typically if you're, if, if the market, you know, it's in a bullish or bearish, you know, condition, uh, they, they tend to, um, uh, they tend to pull back during those periods of time. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I do put them on overnight and then once I, once I, you know, take my profit, um, you know, I'll wait for, you know, the right condition and I'll put, I'll put on another one. All right. So the premium that I use is between a dollar fifteen and a dollar forty. So the delta, it, it, you know, compares to about six to eight uh, on in in uh, in delta terms. Okay, when I put them on, take profit. I use ten cents or five cents for each spread that I put on, uh, or you can let it go to expiration. Um, uh, but but if you put it on at six o'clock at night, that that the expiration for that is going to be the next day at four o'clock. Okay, so just keep that in mind, all right? And that's why you can get in and out of these things uh, uh, nicely. Uh, I always, you know, still you can use a 2x or 3x to short the, the you know, uh, uh, the short strike to take a stop loss. That's perfectly fine, right? Uh, and I'll show you an example of that. I think I went over uh, on one of those. But uh, in any case, uh, you can also roll trade the trade using a condor. So you're, you're rolling a trade within the same uh, the, the, within the same expiration, okay? Uh, and you want to do that like within 20 points of it, uh, of it being breached, okay? So that you can get a good, uh, a good credit for it, okay? Uh, the other part of this is that you can close the threatened trade and open a new trade in the next credit cycle or, or the next contract for uh, ES, right? Uh, hopefully you're, you're getting this and again, I'll, I'll be able to answer all your questions here. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the, 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 the trade plan that I use uh, for this and it's, and it's actually worked really, really well, <laughs> really well. All right. So let's, let's, uh, let's hone in on these, on these trades. All right. So I have, a think, I think I have four or five of these, uh, that I'm going to walk you through. All right, here we go. So, uh, so these, these, I'm sharing here this uh, this grid here because this is a uh, one trade that I used, okay, from November third and November fourth, uh, and these are the the actual trades that I had placed, okay. And then we'll go through this, but I just wanted to share with you the, the just the the amount of stuff that they put in here. <laughs> so I I shorten it down, short shorten it down so you guys can uh, so you guys can really see the the what's important here. All right, okay. So uh, let's let's go with okay. Let's start with a bad trade, or actually a, a, a trade loss, right, right? Which is not a bad trade. Okay, so um, so this was not a good day for me when I put it on. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can put on a trade and it's like the opposite happens, right? And so uh, um, you know, and it does happen to me a lot. Not, not a lot, a lot, but a lot. <clears throat> okay, so um, so the first trade I put on was and it looks like spx right but it's not so i i i gave it a shorthand here uh so i put on a 60 uh 60 uh, um, uh premium on this all right um and i was trading a little bit different this is from uh yeah uh first of uh first of november and then i i changed a little bit uh after this all right so i put this trade on uh i put the uh <clears throat> the, the call side and then i put on the put side right and of course, I put the put side on uh, when when I should have been putting the call side on, uh, and vice versa. So the day didn't start out right. So um, and then what happened? It kept going up, and I said, "Forget it. You know, I'm just going to get out of this trade." And and so I got out of this trade for a for a 25 cent loss. Um, and then what happened was <laughs> the market just went way down. Okay, I should have stayed in this trade, but I didn't. And then I got out of this trade uh, at at three dollars. Okay, and so it's it's a uh, little bit a little bit more than three uh, x. It's probably like four x here, uh, but uh, the the P and L was uh, the loss was two hundred sixty five dollars. It's not a huge loss, uh, and um, you know there's other ways to you know to to manage this thing. But you know I I knew I, I started wrong. And so uh, I just wanted to end this trade and, and it was gone. All right. All right. So let's get into uh, another trade that was really, really volatile here. And uh, I, I worked my way through it. And um, here we go. All right. So 
um, 3.24 p.m., so this is the, the end of the trading session, right, the daily trading session I put on, and this, you know, you can see the the, the amount here. I put on a dollar thirty on this one, okay? All right? And so now remember, a dollar thirty to uh, two contracts, you're actually receiving half of that, right? So you're you're uh, you're getting uh, sixty five cents on that, okay? So uh, I put this on, and then I put on the put, and then uh, I was able to get out of it at ten cents, right? Okay. Then I put on, uh, I sold another one. Uh, a little bit lower than that, and uh, I was able to, um, let's see, so I sold at 110 and bought it for, yeah, bought it for five cents, okay? However, you can see here where this went, okay? So this went way down here, and, and the range here is 3710 to 3800, right? So uh, down here, I was in the money. I was already in the money. And so I thought, okay, I'm in the money. There's definitely support. You know, there's support from here to here. You know, there's the really strong support. And I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait this out. And I did. I waited it out. And um, so I could have I closed the trade, you know, for a loss, um, you know, or, you know, get assigned. But I, you know, I, I looked at the, uh, you know, I looked at the the support area here, and that was pretty strong support, and so I hung in there and and took uh, took it. All right. Uh, okay. So that's uh, that's this trade. All right. So let's go to the next one. Oh wait. Actually sold a dollar twenty again. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't, I'm not done. <laughs> so I sold it. Uh, uh, once I got out of it, I sold a dollar twenty. Let's see, did I get out? Oh, yeah. And the market, because it was so close to the end, right, um, I actually closed the trade at 60 cents, right? I, I was actually putting on this trade uh, for the next session, for the next day. Uh, but, you know, I, it got cut in half and, and, I, and I took the profit. Okay. And that's what you do. You know, if you, if you see that opportunity, you, you take it. All right. So total return minus fees and commissions on this one, it's uh, 285 on this one. All right. Okay. So uh, this one's already looking bad, right? <laughs> but let's see what happens. All right. So I sold, uh, I sold uh, 36, uh, 37.60, 37.45 put a dollar 30. And then I sold a call for a dollar five. Right. And so uh, the call actually, we went down and I closed the trade for 10 cents here. And then I sold um, another call spread, you know, when the market went up a little bit, I sold it again. And then I closed the call again. So keep in mind here, I'm still, I'm still open on this uh, put, right? But along the way, I'm going to, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take those opportunities and, and get that profit. All right. So now this time the market didn't come back and I got assigned. And this is what the assignment looks like. And when you guys look at it in your statement, right, it, it doesn't show up anywhere. <laughs> it, it does show up actually, but it, sh it shows up in your futures part of the uh, of this of the thinkorswim statement. And so, right at four o'clock, I mean, right on it, I got assigned one uh, <clears throat> one futures contract. Okay, at thirty seven sixty. And then what happened was, um, I thought, okay. Maybe, you know, I, I had a very, very small loss actually here. And, uh, and, and it wasn't until I, I arranged this, I knew it was a small loss. So, you know, I just went on, but it actually was a, uh, actually was a small profit. <laughs> and so what happened was um, I got out of the trade at 37.57.50, right? Uh, which is about $125 away from the 37.60. And so with, with the profits that I had with these, with these other trades, uh, it actually came out positive, not too much, $35. So basically I paid the commissions. Uh, and so that's, that's how this trade uh, fell through. So I wanted to share with you what happens to 
in a trade when it um, when it's assigned. Okay, uh, and they, I mean, it it gets assigned immediately. And also with with SPX, um, if your if your trade expires, uh, you have to wait until the next day for that thing to clear. Okay, uh, with with options on futures, they immediately uh, they immediately you know, cash out. You know the expiration and your your funds get right back to your account. Okay, that's another thing, another good thing that I like about it. All right, let's go to the next trade here. Okay, so here this was a really really choppy day here. Okay, and so uh, this was uh, 4 p.m. to 8:30, 8:30 <clears throat> uh, p.m. I didn't put p.m. on there. I think it was 8:30 in the morning. Let's see. Okay, so sold uh, sold a uh, 36.35, 36.20, a dollar 30. Uh, and this was a uh, put, and you can see what happened there. Okay, uh, the put hung in there, <laughs> and uh, and then I put on a call. You know, I saw you know a nice uh, support area here, uh, and I put on a call here. Okay, and then uh, uh, I bought that call back. On, and you know, this day was uh, this day was a day before the um, uh, inflation report was was going to be due, uh, and so I did not want to get in the way of that in the way of that uh, uh, get get in the way of that report. Uh, but I did want to trade to see what would happen in terms of volatility uh, prior to that report, and and actually the the uh, the premiums held pretty well, you know, for that. So I did get out uh, on this uh, when the um, when the put side uh, went down to about 95. You can see that the you know the rate of decay here allowed me to take off that trade. Um, you know even when it was uh, even when it was a higher position than than we put it on. Okay, uh, and that's what that's what you know that's what you get with a high probability trade. You know you don't have to be exactly right, and you use Theta to help you uh, to help you uh, make that trade profitable. All right, here comes another trade here. I think this is the last one. Okay, so this one is from 11:10 uh, from 8:30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, so this was during the regular session that I put this on. Okay, and this this was the uh, this was a day that we really had a, a strong move up. Okay, in the market. And so I was pretty confident that that I was going to trade in one direction uh, just because of uh, just because of the trend that was happening. And so I put on a trade, and uh, 9:46, a couple hours later, I closed it at 10 cents. Uh, then I put on another uh, put. Uh, you know, I thought it was going to continue with this trend, but we dipped lower. Okay, and. Uh, uh, you know, and even even if it was, you know, it's 80-40 uh, on the short strike, you see the range here was 80, 50, uh, 38 50 So I had a long way to go for this thing to uh, to be breached, okay? So I closed that trade uh, later on uh, in the day for $0.45. Cents. And then, okay, and that's it. So uh, 8250 on these on these trades. Now when I when I test these trades, I'm trading really really small. Okay, uh, and I do this for you know several months before I actually start uh, adding uh, contracts. Uh, and then and I you know I, I would I would recommend for the for you guys to do the same thing. Okay, all right. So I think this is the last trade. Um, okay, so on this day this was 1110. And uh, 8:30 to 5 p.m. Another, uh, you know, in in the uh, <clears throat> in the normal trading session. So I put on uh, the uh, a put spread here and a call spread. Okay. So this was almost the SPX equivalent, right? Uh, close the the call spread at 35 cents. And close the uh, put spread for 10 cents, right? So even if it was a straight market, you would have had pretty much the same results, right? And then I sold 
um, a put spread for 85 cents down here. And I closed the trade up here for um, expired. Actually, it expired here. So I let it expire because I wanted to see what was going to happen. Um, so it was the first trade that I put on that I allowed it to expire. And sure enough, it just came right back at me. And so on this on this trade, I made 137.50 on it. Okay. All right. So hopefully um, you have a better understanding of ES futures um, uh, and uh, ES or options on ES futures. And uh, this concludes the technical and uh, uh, technical part of the the, uh, the 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 webinar. Hopefully you you've got some value of it on it and um, hope you like it.